Shayna was utterly in love with Ryan, so when he died under extremely tragic and traumatic circumstances, she was absolutely devastated. But her devastation wasn't because of his death, or even the fact that he was murdered. It was because she was the one who had pulled the trigger. But this was simply a case of self-defense, she said. She had no choice but to pull the trigger. Not once, not twice, but six times. This is Red Rum, stories about the true victims of crime. This show is made from various source documents listed in the show notes. I use news archives, documentary footage, and court documents, and so the episodes are accurate to the source materials I can find. Find all the episodes that are on YouTube as a podcast version if you prefer to listen on the go, all available in the description box or wherever you get your podcasts. Ryan Poston was born into a loving and close-knit family. Even after his mum and dad got a divorce, the entire family remained close, and there was a really healthy relationship between him and his mum's new husband, and he really thrived through those years and the following few years, both at school and socially as he was growing up. His entire family had a good amount of money. He grew up quite privileged, but he was reported to be humble about his upbringing and an incredibly hard worker. He ended up studying at university with a view to become a lawyer. He actually followed in his father's footsteps and went to law school before getting a job as an attorney in Cincinnati in Ohio. It was whilst he was working in Cincinnati, aged 28, that his cousin introduced him to a friend of hers, 19-year-old Shayna Hubers. They actually were first introduced online through Facebook, quite old school, and the pair got on very well pretty much straight away. I think the age difference here is interesting. Because of what's to come with the case, it doesn't surprise me that there's a level of dependence that became quite apparent and a certain kind of power dynamic here. There were a lot of similarities between the two of them. Shayna was also incredibly high achieving, and there was a mutual understanding of them wanting their own lives and to achieve their own goals. And for the first part of their relationship, that seemed to really work for them both. Shayna was busy achieving success in her academic work, and she even started modeling. Her looks and how she was perceived by the outside world were extremely important to her. She was also a singer. She enjoyed it and she was good. Well, some of the later interview footage of Shayna shows her walking around the room, humming a tune and eventually singing. And even when an officer comes back into the room to give her coffee or water, she continues her tune until she breaks for a microsecond to say thanks before going back to singing. Given what's happened and what I'll go on to talk about, it's unbelievable that she is so calm that she's able to have a bit of a sing-song, but we will get to that. During the first little while that Shayna was dating Ryan, she was also studying for a master's to become a school counsellor, and this honestly was not surprising to her family and friends, but her and Ryan's relationship during this time that she was studying for her masters, began to shift slightly. Ryan was continuing to work hard at his job, and by all accounts, he was thriving and moving up the ladder, but Shayna's focus had moved quite significantly away from her personal achievements and goals, and instead were wholly focused on Ryan and her relationship with him. Of course, this didn't go down too well with Ryan. He was attempting to build a career, keep up his social life and have a relationship, um, with Shayna's feelings turning towards obsession, to be quite honest. Ryan found it hard to keep all three in balance. And it also became clear that Ryan's female friends were a bit of a problem for Shayna. The pair had been dating for around... 18 months, but she'd already attempted to isolate him away from all of his female friends. And she seemed to have this sort of fixation on his ex-girlfriend, Lauren. She constantly compared herself to Lauren and would always ask people if she was prettier or if Lauren was prettier. 
who was the better girlfriend? And so it's not surprising, but it wasn't long before Ryan decided to end things, but that was not in Shayna's plan at all. By all accounts, she had been planning to settle down with Ryan, buy a house, have a few children. This breakup just wasn't gonna fly for her and breakups are hard. So over the couple of weeks and months that followed, the couple got back together and broke up and got to back together, so on and so forth. And this went on for a while, but Ryan was clearly quite unhappy about the situation. In fact, the phone records would later show that Shayna had messaged Ryan over 100,000 times during the course of their relationship. And for every one message that Ryan sent to Shayna, she'd send him 100 messages. That's what it averaged out at. Unreal. One message Ryan sent to a friend said, quote, this is getting to be restraining order level crazy. But Ryan said this without even knowing the full extent of what Shayna was doing. The pair of them had met on Facebook, so it's likely she thought there was a chance he was messaging other people on Facebook. Bear in mind that they kept breaking up and getting back together, so it's not an unfair assumption, but what was completely unfair was that Shayna used this impetus to secretly log on to Ryan's Facebook account and track his messages. And alongside this, she was completely invading his professional time. She would call his office multiple times a day and if she ever wasn't able to get through, then she would just drive up to the offices and start demanding that his assistant would let her through and she'd be able to see Ryan. It's unsurprising really that the relationship was on the rocks for the majority of it, with the couple constantly breaking up and getting back together again and then breaking up and repeating this. But when they were together, they would have regular dates and they were trying to make it work. And one of those dates that they went on was inspired by Ryan's love for guns. He wanted to share this with Shayna. Now, Ryan had got a number of firearms that he kept at his house and he shared this hobby with not just Shayna, but also his previous partners. His ex-girlfriend Lauren, for example, spoke about how he was confident with guns and actually she liked that. It made her feel, she said, protected. But Shayna wasn't super into guns. In fact, she said, although she didn't mind Ryan going to the shooting range, she didn't particularly like going herself. Even so, she did actually end up going on a date there with Ryan to the shooting range. It was Ryan's idea, but she did agree to it. And while she was there, she messaged one of her friends saying, quote, a part of me wanted to turn around and shoot him. And even before she went, she had messaged a different friend saying, quote, I'm going to the shooting range with Ryan tonight. I want to turn around and shoot him and kill him and play it like it's an accident. Shayna claimed to her friend that Ryan was verbally abusive and although this was never reported or corroborated any further, that's what she said happened. And we know from the messages that she sent to her friends that she was very vocal about some of the problems that they were having as a couple or, or even the way that she was feeling about Ryan. But within all of these messages, there's none that the investigating team could find that corroborated in any way that Ryan was abusive towards Shayna. That's not to say it didn't happen. We know it's not always easy to admit that you are a victim of domestic abuse, but let's look at the evidence. And to be honest, even if it is true, that's a factor that could contribute to Shayna's state, but it certainly doesn't mean she's gonna get away with what we soon find out is murder. She also texted a friend during an argument saying, quote, he says he's only with me because I make him feel so awful about it when I cry. Ryan was pretty set on leaving the relationship. Even if Shayna didn't want that, Ryan was gonna make sure it happened. Now, the timeline is a bit tricky here. They'd broken up before and they'd gotten back together. And whilst they were broken up one time, both Ryan and Shayna would see other people and Shayna did later admit to this, but when they're back together, she said she was completely faithful. So now they're back in this relationship, but Ryan is obviously being evasive and is actually lying to Shayna at this point. He's seeing her, talking to her, taking her to his family's house. But alongside this, 
his mind is not in this relationship and he's clearly looking for a way out. And so he had actually started messaging another woman. He started talking to this woman called Audrey Bolt and she had just won Miss Ohio the previous year. She is beautiful. The pair had arranged this date together and he was clearly very excited about it. He told all of his friends about it and some of his colleagues. And so he told Shayna that he was busy this weekend and he just wouldn't be able to see her. Now the very next morning, Ryan woke up to Shayna complaining that she had heart pains. And she told him that she'd been feeling unwell all night. And then when Ryan actually went out of the bedroom and went into the main living room, he found Shayna's mum asleep on the sofa. Shayna's mum had driven overnight and come to look after her daughter. And she then asked, Shayna then asked Ryan if he would come to the hospital to get her chest pain checks out, but he said no. And so instead, Shayna's mum would have to take her. Now, during the course of the rest of the day, Shayna texted Ryan and said that she was at the emergency room, that she had been referred to a specialist and that she had had certain tests. And beyond this, the day continued as planned and Ryan was messaging Audrey, specifying where they would meet for their, their date at a local bar. And Shayna was texting Ryan and Shayna and her mum just continued the day as planned. But at around 8.30 that same evening, Ryan had come back to his apartment and he heard a knock on the door and it was Shayna. She had come round completely unplanned, at least on Ryan's part, and so he let her in. Now, just over 25 minutes later, 911 operators received this call. Just a warning before I do play that it is pretty horrifically chilling and grim. Kevin Kelly, 911. Ma'am, I killed my boyfriend in self defense. What did you kill him with? A gun, a loaded gun in the house. Tell me where the gun is right now. A gun is in the house. I, I laid it on the bookshelf. Where are you? I'm standing about 10 feet from his dead body. <laughs> okay, are you sure that he is dead? He's, he's dead, ma'am. He's completely dead. Okay. And how long ago did you shoot him? I don't know, 15, 10 minutes, not even that long. Like 10 or 15 I minutes ago? Yeah. Okay, what's yeah. your name? My name is Shana Michelle Huber. The officers don't want me to stay on the line with you, so when you get when they get there, they're going to want to know where that gun is, and we want you to get out safely too, okay? Okay, are they going to arrest me? Uh, Ma'am, I don't know what they'll do. We're going to send, send them out. I'm going to stay on the line with you, okay? I mean, I'm not a murderer, ma'am. I just killed him. Ma'am, you're sure he's not breathing at all? No, that's okay. They actually have someone that's outside almost right now, but I'm going to stay on line with you, okay? Ma'am, and then because he was twitching and I knew he was going to die anyway, and he was making funny noises, I shot him a couple more times just to kill him because I knew he would have been... I'm sorry, you said you shot him a couple more times after that? Yeah, I... I How many times did you shoot him total? I don't know. Okay, because he was twitching and you knew he was going to die, so you shot him again? I not to make sure he was dead because he was twitching so bad and I didn't want to watch him lay there and twist. So you shot him instead of calling 911? Yeah, I did because I knew he was going to die anyway. <laughs> Shayna was taken into the local police station so that she could give a statement. She did initially ask for a lawyer, actually, when she was in the interview room, but then, unprompted by police, she proceeded to talk for hours and hours and hours, and she went through the events of that evening. The interview is actually unbelievable at points. She says that one of the last, quote, good conversations that they had Ryan had spoken about how he wanted a friend of hers to do his veneers and also how he wanted to get a nose job. Fine. She then goes on to say, and this is unreal, she says that now she gave him the nose job he always wanted because she'd shot him and deformed his face. She said that the reason she'd shot him again and again and again was to put him out of his misery. He was gonna die anyway, she said. And so she did it so that he wasn't in pain and so that he stopped twitching. She said that he would rather be dead than have a deformed face. At one point, she even says that this is all, and I quote, very traumatic, you know, 
very traumatic for me to live with. She is only concerned with how all of this may affect her. This has nothing to do with Ryan at all, certainly in her mind. Shayna was arrested and charged with murder, and her bail was set quite high, it was set at $5 million. She pleaded not guilty, and her case went to trial in April of 2015. She said that she had turned up at Ryan's apartment and they'd argued. And she said he tried to carry her out of the house, and that she started becoming scared for her life, but she proceeded to go back into the apartment to, quote, get her stuff. Doesn't make a huge amount of sense that being scared for her life, she'd just pop inside again to grab a handbag, but even so, she said that there had been some kind of struggle, Ryan had grabbed the gun, and then she'd managed to get it off of him, and then pulled the trigger, and that's how that first shot had happened. But the prosecution stated that there was no way this was self-defence. There was no evidence that there had been any kind of a struggle or violence that she'd claimed Ryan had inflicted on her. It just wasn't looking likely with the evidence that they had gathered. And there was ample evidence to show what may have been her motive. Shayna had been able to see Ryan's messages on Facebook, so really it is likely that she knew exactly what he and Audrey had been speaking about and the date that they'd been planning. At the trial, phone records and internet searches were provided as part of the evidence and they ended up showing that in the days before the murder, Shayna had actually searched Audrey Bolt, which is this woman's name, online and found her Wikipedia page and on top of that, she, uh, she'd she actually requested to become Facebook friends with Audrey and Audrey had accepted. So they were Facebook friends at this time. During the course of the day, Shayna had told Ryan that she'd obviously been experiencing these chest pains and she'd been texting Ryan, updating him on how she was getting on, craving his response probably, craving his text from him and saying that she was in the emergency room. She'd been referred to this specialist as well as having various scans and tests. All of this, however, was completely untrue. In fact, Shayna spent the whole day with her mum, just going to various clothing stores and having a bit of a girl's day. And her phone records showed that she'd been Googling heart problems and symptoms associated with heart disease so that she could text Ryan in a convincing way about what was going on with her, even though it was completely made up. More phone records showed that just moments before she'd killed Ryan, she had searched on her phone how to unlock a door with a bobby pin. And evidence at the crime scene showed that Ryan had locked himself in his bedroom, which completely contradicts Shayna's earlier statement, her version of events where she was being chased and attacked by Ryan and he was trying to get her and she was trying to get away. And this evidence showed that Ryan had locked himself in his bedroom and Shayna had been outside googling how to unlock a door and then she'd actually been successful in unlocking that bedroom door before opening it and coming face to face with Ryan. The main part of Shayna's defence was centred around Ryan being this aggressive and violent person, both emotionally and physically. And as part of her defence, Shayna said that Ryan had previously gone too far when they were having rough sex and wouldn't stop. But the defence presented evidence of texts that Shayna had sent during their relationship, and this evidence completely contradicted what she was saying. In the text messages, she texted him, talking about corsets and, quote, stuff that I've never worn, wouldn't that be kind of hot, and we could, like, role play. But Ryan messaged back saying that he didn't really think that was his kind of thing and he just wouldn't be into it. The prosecution also brought up the point that Shayna had allegedly shot Ryan in self-defence and then waited, very, very abnormal to do in a self-defence case, but she had waited for up to 15 minutes during which she'd gone from shooting him once in this alleged self-defence to a further five times. And then finally, she had called the authorities after 15 minutes. It just doesn't really ring true. 
Ryan's stepdad testified that Ryan had said he was terrified to tell Shayna about his upcoming date because he knew what it would lead to. Of course, he had no idea to the tragic level that that would actually be. Shayna's cellmate testified at trial too, one saying that Shayna had laughed when she told her about killing Ryan, further adding to the point that there was just no remorse there. On the 23rd of April 2015, a jury returned their verdict after just five hours. Shayna was found guilty and she was sentenced to 40 years in prison. But just over a year later, Shayna's verdict was overturned because a member of the jury on her original trial was found to have been convicted. He was a convicted felon and in Kentucky, that's just not allowed. And so Shayna was granted a new trial. In 2018, Shayna's second trial took place where she continued to try and use self-defense as her reasoning for shooting Ryan. But this time, slightly shifting her story to place more emphasis on how physically violent Ryan had been to her. And the testimony that she gave, she actually took the stand in this case. She didn't in her first trial, but she did in the second. This was completely contradicting to her original account of what happened when she said it in that police interview room. And the jury just didn't believe her. But this time, Shayna was found guilty and she was sentenced to life in prison. Thank you for watching this episode of Red Rum. I really appreciate you being here. Um, we had a video, we, I don't know why I say we, it's me. Sometimes my dad helps me write some cases. Um, but we had a video uh, go a bit viral uh, maybe a month ago and we got loads of new subscribers. So hello if you're new. Hello if you're not new as well. Thanks for being here again and again. I appreciate it so much. Um, if you like these cases please do click the thumbs up button if you have a case suggestion whack it down below and i will see you next week for another episode of red room bye